Today, we're going to show how you can use Atomist as a member of your Spring Boot team to simplify your workflow and increase your productivity. So what we're going to do firstly is to go to the Atomist website, Atomist as a service, and we're going to sign in. This will result in us having to authenticate with GitHub. We've already done this here. For example, it knows that it's Jessica who is logged into Atomist. And what she's going to do is go to the Seeds tab because what she wants to do today is start by creating a new project to show how easy that is with Atomist. With Atomist, we have a unique and novel approach to project creation. We don't use templates, we don't cut and paste, we don't like clone the nearest repo and try to clean it up a bit. What we do is we take an existing running project, we run what we call a generator over it, which gathers parameters from the user and produces an independent project that has exactly what you want in it. The starting point for this is called a seed. So here we're showing a list of available project seeds through the Atomist dashboard. If you had Atomist in your own organization, you could have custom seeds. These seeds are GitHub projects. So there's nothing magical about a seed. If we go and have a look at the Spring Boot REST MVC seed, which we're going to be using, it's just a GitHub project. We think Git is so good and that the model of having seeds as GitHub projects is very compelling. It means, for example, that your seed, your starting point for your new projects is version. You can collaborate on it. If you want to fix something or update or add something, you just make a commit, ideally go through your normal PR process and also benefit from the fact that it's using CI. If you're, say, using templates, when you edit the template, you won't know if it's broken the generated project or not to create one. Whereas with this approach, 100% of the time, your seed is a building normal project. In this case, we're showing a Spring Boot project that knows absolutely nothing about Atomist. There's nothing in this project that is special for Atomist. And we also could use somebody else's project. We could use an open source sample or we could use an existing project. So when we have him look inside this, we see that it has CI. And when we go into the source tree, we'll see that it's got exactly what you'd expect. It's got exactly one Spring Boot application class. In this case, it's in the com.atomist.spring package. But as we'll see, Atomist generators are extremely robust. They don't have to have hard-coded paths in them. So we're going to make this using a generator into a unique project for Jessica, and it's going to have the application package that she wants rather than the one that's in the seed. Going back to the list of seeds, you can see on the right there are those green buttons that correspond to GitHub topics. These are topics that we use to tag repositories. This means that we can easily search for our seeds and we can easily extend by adding new seeds. So what we're going to do is use the Java seed and we're actually going to go to the pre-fill seed. This, interestingly, if you look at the repo that's shown, it's Atomist seed, Spring Rest seed, it's the same repo. However, we're pointing to a different ref. Why are we doing that? We're doing that firstly to show that it's possible because it's kind of cool, but more importantly, because we've deliberately done some things to this seed that show other capabilities of Atomist. So now we go through and we add the kind of information that's needed to customize the project. For example, what organization should it go in? What should be the name of the new repository? What are the Maven coordinates that we will put in this new project. If you're familiar with the popular Spring Initializer tool, this is very similar to what they gathered. The difference, of course, is that we're going farther and that we're going to directly create you a GitHub repo. We also go beyond it in that our value doesn't stop after the repo is created. With Spring Initializer, we'd get a zip file and then we're kind of on our own. With Atomist, we're going to get not just a shiny new project that is set up exactly the way we want it based on our potentially unique seed, 
but we're going to get an ongoing ownership experience. So here by checking the installed Atomist repository webhook, Atomist is going to be able to see events around that project and Atomist is also going to be a useful collaborator for us. So here we've associated the event stream with the appropriate Slack team and later we'll show you some of our chat ops functionality. So now Atomist is creating the project and once that's finished, it's redirected us to the Atomist project page. On the Atomist project page, we have a link to the actual project on GitHub. So let's, let's have a look at the GitHub project. And what you'll see is that it's very similar in structure to the seed. However, it has a clean Git history and it is customized in its Maven POM and also in the Java code itself. So when we drill into the source tree here, what we see is that it's been refactored. So whereas originally, I think it was com.atomist spring, now we're seeing that it's com.fluffy.corgi and it's corgi application. It's a unique project, but it's based on the same structure. Returning to the Atomist project page, we see on the left, the event stream. These are the events that occur on the project as you deliver it. Events are core to Atomist. Atomist is essentially an event-driven automation platform, and this stream of events enables you potentially to see the flow right through from code commits to deployment and even APM events. There are no events at this point because nothing has happened to this project. It's a shiny new project. Nothing has ever happened to it. On the right, we see information related to Atomist automations. So we see some alerts that are the results of automatically running Atomist automations on this project and spotting things that are concerning. And we also see related commands. These are associated using those GitHub topics that we can see at the top right. So for example, we could enable Travis CI if we didn't already have CI. So let's start with the alerts. The idea is that Atomist helps you identify anything that you should worry about with respect to your project, and in many cases to fix it automatically. So we can see that one of the alerts concerns the Spring Boot version. This seems pretty concerning because particularly after the Equifax event, I think we're starting to see that keeping things up to date is a rather good idea particularly in a world where we have potentially hundreds of microservices, keeping things up to date can be quite tricky. This is something that Atomist helps us with. So we can see here that Atomist is noticed by actually reading the code and configuration that we have a Spring Boot version of 1.5.7 instead of the desired 1.5.9 we want across our organization. In this case, Atomist isn't just presenting us with that information, it's giving us a big green button that says solve problem. I love big green buttons that say solve problems. We're gonna press that button and this is going to result in Atomist running an automation that's actually going to make a commit to our repository. One of the core capabilities of Atomist is that it can manipulate code and configuration in a very clean way. As we run this command, we will see that there is now an event on this repository. You can see suddenly the event stream on the left is starting to show things. This is because Atomist, being a good citizen, made a branch and it made a commit to that branch and it pushed that branch to GitHub. And then it actually raises a PR on that. Essentially, Atomist did what you or I would do as responsible developers. We're not going to commit to master. What we're going to do is say, you know what? You're on an old version of Spring Boot. That isn't great. Please let me help. Please merge my PR. So you can see here one of the interesting characteristics of the Atomist event stream, which is that it isn't merely about notifications. It gives you highly contextual actions. For example, when you raise a PR, one of the things you might want to do is merge it. Another thing that you might want to do is request a review. Atomist is pretty smart. When it gives an event notification that's available to the team, it typically provides actions that are actually really helpful in terms of the natural next step. So here we have more big green buttons. 
let's not merge it without checking it out. Atomist gives us a link in this case. So another nice thing about the Atomist notifications is that they give us links to the definitive source of information, such as, for example, a particular GitHub screen or a build log. In this case, we're going to have a look at that pull request. And as you can see, Atomist has done a very neat job of taking 1.5.7 and updating it to 1.5.9. This pull request looks pretty good. It looks like something that we can safely merge. So let's click that big green button and let's merge it. That results in yet another event in our event stream. And Atomist also says, ah, what's the kind of thing that you tend to do after you merge a PR? You probably want to delete the branch because we don't want branch proliferation. So we get another one of these buttons that says, hey, click here, and this useful thing will happen. The buttons correspond to Atomist automation. So you can create your own notifications with your own buttons that run your arbitrary commands as well as the ones we get out of the box. The event stream is available both through the web interface and in Slack. The web interface gives one place to go and look at your project and see what's happening on it. It's kind of partly a reference as well as an event stream. However, Slack is very, very compelling for the event stream side of that. Obviously, it's possible to integrate into Slack uh, bots that will surface information from GitHub, Travis, etc., Heroku. We believe that the Atomist integration is superior because it correlates all the events that relate to a particular activity, potentially right through to production. Here in the channel for the Buick service, we can actually trace right through from commit to deployment. So we see the CI build that's triggered by a commit and we see the deployment through an agent that's embedded into the Spring Boot app when it starts up. So Atomist gives us visibility from code commit through to application startup. So we can see what code's running where. So Atomist gives you messages that are contextual, that are constantly updated, more respectful of your screen real estate, and also have these useful action buttons. And we can go into a particular channel, so the Corgi channel here, and we can run commands that will be aware of the context. So they'll be aware that this command should run on that service. We're going to run a command that I wrote for my talk at Spring One. I had a chat a couple of weeks ago with my friend Phil Webb, who's the lead of Spring Boot, showed Phil some of the capabilities of Atomist, particularly what we call reviewers, which is our ability to scan project source code in a sophisticated way. And Phil got pretty excited and Phil had various ideas relating to things that Phil hates, you know, really a lot of the goodness of Spring Boot is to do with an opinionated take on things. And there are certain idioms that Phil doesn't like. Following that conversation with Phil and a couple of follow-up emails, I wrote a command called Ask Phil. What this does is run on a repository and look at things that Phil doesn't like. One of the things Phil doesn't like is the old style generic at request annotation, the Spring MVC at request annotation. What Phil prefers is the new ones like at get mapping, at post mapping that are a little bit simpler and it seems that people in the community find them clearer. Here, what this automation has done is it's, it's found two old style annotations and it is flagged them. And on the jump to link, you'll see it goes precisely in the source code to where that problem is. It's also found some unnecessary component scan annotations. In Spring, you have at component scan, which says set up automatic scanning of your class path for Spring annotations. But if you have an at Spring Boot application class, you don't need the component scan because the at Spring Boot application class inherits that behavior. Phil says that he really hates having these unnecessary annotations. So I was able to use Atomist to write a surprisingly small piece of code that finds and zaps all such annotations. Atomist does a pull request rather than commits to master. And when we look at the Java code change, we can see it's very clear it's just zapped that particular line. And here we can use exactly the same action buttons as we could in the web interface 
and we could merge this pull request conveniently using Atomist. If we go back to the web interface, we'll see that those events also showed up there. If we refresh the page, we can see that one of the alerts has gone away. So because we've merged these fixes in master, we actually got rid of the problem. The ability to scan repos and make automatic fixes even on one repo at a time is useful. But really, do we want to go around and ask Phil, for example, about every single repo? We're, we're going to get sick of doing that. I think Phil gets sick of doing that. So Atomist also gives you the ability to run scans or commands across a large number of repos. So in this case, what we want to do is we don't want to ask Phil. We want to unleash Phil. We want to cause Phil to look at all our repositories in this organization. Here we see uh, Phil, it's going, we're going to see his face for a little bit longer because he's going to have to think a bit harder about this. But Phil is going to inspect all our projects in this organization. Clearly, if they're not Spring Boot projects, Phil's just going to ignore them and move on. But if he finds Spring Boot projects, he's going to actually do the things that we've seen before. So it's exactly the same thing, but it demonstrates one of the things that computers are rather good at, which is that if we can take a tedious task and we know exactly how to do it once, we can teach a computer so that it can do it 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times. It doesn't get tired. It doesn't get bored. In this case, it's a perfect example of the power of automation, that we can take something we know how to do and we can scale it up. So here we have exactly the same commands that have run on all our repos. We're also in the process of implementing an organization level page for the web interface where you'll be able to apply these kind of reviewers and commands across all of your projects. Finally, let's have a look at some of the code behind this. As I said, there's a surprisingly small amount of code in some of the automations here. Atomist automations are written in TypeScript and they have, if you're a Spring developer, a programming model that should be somewhat familiar. If we look, for example, at the unleash fill parameters for that command, what we'll see is that it's a TypeScript class that uses decorators. They look rather like Java annotations that uses decorators to gather and specify the validation requirements. So if you're a Spring developer, this will be somewhat familiar. The command handlers themselves implement the handle command interface and take these parameters as an argument. It, with Atomist, you can write command handlers that do a wide range of things. And even more importantly, you can write event handlers that respond to events. So, for example, as we've seen, the kind of response to raising a PR, but that respond to events like a successful deployment, perhaps, or maybe something coming out of even your application as a custom event. The Atomist event stream doesn't stop at push or build. It can go right through your delivery process. Here in Slack, we can see the events that result from a deployed service starting up, correlating with the relevant commit chart. These particular events come from the Atomist agent you can choose to embed in your Spring Boot apps. But you can also send your own custom events in to complete the picture of your entire delivery process so it's visible to your whole team. It becomes easy to see what version of which service is running where. In this case, the particular command handlers we're writing use our ability to drill into the AST of Java code to find exactly what we want. For example, if we look at the remove unnecessary component scan implementation, what we see is that we've written a very small declaration, what we call a path expression, rather similar to XPath if you have any experience with that, but it picks out exactly the point in your Java code that you want to zap. What it says is if you've got an at Spring Boot application annotation on a Java class, and you've also got an at component scan annotation, show me that at component scan source element. And then it simply removes it and Atomist can automatically write it back to the project as a pull request. So hopefully this gives you a taste of the wide range of things that you can do with Atomist in custom automations using TypeScript.